Thank you, people. And I think the next one that is we've got to be brave and we have to wake up with some children and listen to them. So I think I will hand over next to David. Um, David, as we heard you up here, is head of sustainable building, well, head of sustainable buildings and engineering services association. Um, he also has 20 years of experience and expertise in sustainable buildings and renewable technologies. So let's hope he's going to tell us all how we can save time and money. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Right. Uh, I knew when I saw the program that I saw that Peter was on first, that there was a problem, and you succeeded in that I am out of my comfort zone there. So. <laughs> okay. so this is all about the delivery. So this is really pretty boring stuff, but how do you deliver sustainable schools? Now you all know the drivers, yeah. the climate, the, uh, the rain we've been having, which is supposedly due to climate change, so we know many of the reasons why we need to build sustainable schools. In fact, a sustain sustainable economy in general, <coughs> including things like building regulations, planning regulations. And I've only got one to add to that, one driver. And that is that people want to make a difference. So this is Sir Stuart Rose who came up with Plan A. He did that because actually he wanted to make a difference. So there are many people in the education environment, I would suggest, particularly when we did the Building Schools for the Future project, who actually wanted to make a difference, wanted to be remembered for something. So if you do a project, please don't let that bit dominate everything else, because there is a danger if you do that. Because actually we're all human. And when I did this slide, I didn't realise that it was actually slightly on the, on the piss, as they say, in the building trade. But actually, I left it like that because that's the way the world is. It's not straight, it's not level, it's, not, it's a little bit more difficult than you think. So what I want to talk about is performance, not the product. The performance of the product you buy is more important than the product itself. So what does that mean? It's about deliverables. You don't buy products, you buy how they actually deliver the thing that they're installed and designed to do. And that's quite important, that's very important. So if we look at the government's perspective of what is performance, not product, carbon targets, which if you're the government, the easiest thing to do is make them bigger, and make them further away, and then become somebody else's problem. You, you guess by now I'm a cynic by nature. But also energy security is now the real focus. What they're very, very concerned about is the lights going out, which helps nobody if that happens. Any idea where this might be? It's a photograph of a city taken fairly recently. Tokyo. And what you can see is a whole black area there where they've had a blackout, effectively. And that's because of the nuclear crisis of the when they shut down all the reactors, they had insufficient generation capacity outside of that. So they had to do blackouts. Now actually, we could get rid of our coal-fired power stations now. We could not build nuclear. We could do all of these things if you're prepared to do that. Now who's prepared to do that in the room? You are. Well actually, it's OK as long as you want to do that possibly. Traffic and things like that. It's, it's a bit of a problem for society if you actually did that. The internet, that's all okay. So, what does it mean in education? And this was the best description I could find. And it meets the needs of users by supporting effective teaching and learning, by being functional, comfortable, stable, and cost effective over its lifetime. So basically, if the people in my industry, which is the building, and essentially building services, heating, ventilating, air conditioning, all those things that you have around you, if we succeed, you're not aware of it. You don't see it, you don't feel it, you're neither hot, you're not cold, you don't, it doesn't impact on you. You only actually value it when you haven't got it. Because you are too cold, you're too hot, you're underlit, the air quality is not good enough. Now that's not a good business to be in, because you don't value it, you're not willing to pay for it. 
Unless, of course, you've had a really bad experience and then you make sure you don't make that mistake again. So what didn't deliver, or what doesn't deliver in schools at the moment? Um, the government sponsored a survey, a post-occupancy evaluation on the building schools for the future projects and some of the primary schools as well, uh, which they didn't want to publish. But luckily, Building Magazine did it for us. And these are the things that didn't or don't deliver in new schools now. Summertime temperatures. So it's not actually, we don't have a problem anymore of underheating your houses, for example. They're overheated, not underheated. And that's because actually the insulation's all on the inside of the building because it's cheaper. So we make these short term decisions across the board. Ventilation, lack of decent air to breathe so you don't feel good. Users felt hot and stuffy. Well, that's actually a sort of a combination of those two things. And acoustics, really important. Now, one of the reasons that you might feel hot and stuffy is that you're by a busy road, so you can't actually open windows, so you have to mechanically ventilate. But actually, it's one of those things that they do value engineering uh, in that, what can we cut the costs on? Well, architects rarely like to cut the facade and all those bits, so they won't win a prize if they do that. But actually, you cut the stuff inside the building you don't see, that you don't value, then nobody will notice, so you haven't got it. And acoustics is really important in classrooms, because if they can't hear you, they can't learn. So what was the cause of this? That inadequate integration of environmental design, which is a bit of a mouthful. Basically, what you've done is you bought a whole lot of products, put them together, and expected them to work. Now, I came today with a PowerPoint presentation. Though I've got an iPad, I've got an iPhone, I've got my own Mac. But actually, I've been to so many conferences where I've gone there, and I've kind of got a lead, I can't plug it in, I just can't get it to work. And so I've learned the lesson that actually the simplest thing is to come with a PowerPoint, because that will work, I know it will work. Now, in schools projects, what we tend to do is buy a product from, say, Austria, buy a mass boy there, you buy a control system from the UK, you buy a ventilation system from Norway, put it all together, and go, well, why doesn't it work? For the same reason. But we seem to send logic out the window in this area. So what was the result? Well, actually, these schools that they did were consuming over 200 to 400% more energy than they were designed to do which is about £85,000 a year difference cost for for a teacher. That's the result. Say that again. Say that again. A teacher. Yeah. And the difference Just that sentence. How many teachers get paid that much? Two teachers. Two teachers. Two teachers. Three teachers. Sorry. Okay, so how do you deliver? Sustainable sort of you keep it simple, stupid is a very good maxim. If it looks complicated, it probably is. If the architect or builder says to you, well, we haven't actually done one of these before, but you're the first to do this, then you're building a prototype. Don't forget, you always build a prototype in the building industry. Everything you do is a prototype. But you're going the extra mile on this prototype front, and probably, if you, if you bought the thing from Austria, the expertise. It's in Austria, so when it goes wrong, where are they going to go back to? Austria. You need to gain control of energy data, so we have a metering company here. If you can't measure it, you can't save it, you need to know, you need to really get granular on where your energy is being used, and you'll find actually in the most unusual places and the most unusual times, like the weekends, like the nights when nobody's there, stuff is coming on, staying. But if you've got the information, you can do something with it. Use debts, display energy certificates, they're the things similar to the things you get on the front of your fridge that tells you how energy efficient it is. Very, very crude measure, but actually gives you something, which you can actually also show to the pupils. It gives you something as a form of measure that you can target <coughs> and say you're going to improve on. And don't be fooled by carbon, bling. You have solar panels on the roof, a wind turbine that you know, really should just say we're really trying to be green, honest. But the study showed that where you have renewable technologies installed, actually energy consumption was higher or up than previously because people tend to forget about it because it's zero carbon or low carbon. 
So you still got to focus on 